What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Millsy. Back at home, Top Commander, back for another episode of Millsy Brews, the show where I brew my version 1.0 deck list of the Commander in front of us on my quest out brew the magic world. As always, the link for the deck is going to be down in the description below. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you could interact with the video, like, comment, subscribe, consider becoming a member of the channel. I'd really appreciate it. But today, we're running through the end of our content cycle for Bloomboro, waiting on all those beautiful Duskmorn spoilers, and I thought, why not continue to go back, look at commanders that maybe some new supports from the set would uh, make a little bit better. And if you haven't seen enough counters uh, content yet, there's more of it to come. We're going to take a look at Hackball of the Surging Soul today, a Simic Merfolk uh, commander. It's the beginning of combat on your turn. Each Merfolk we're going to control is going to explore. And then it says whenever Hackball attacks, we're going to put a land from our hand on the battlefield if we don't draw a card. Exploring is a really interesting mechanic. If you weren't around during LCI, uh, our last time to Ixalan, to see this mechanic happen primarily, uh, when you explore, you're going to take a look at the top card of your deck. Uh, if it's a land, you're going to go ahead and put it into your hand. If it's a non-land card, uh, you're going to put a counter, plus and plus and counter on the creature that explored, and you're going to get your choice. You can either put it back on top, or you can bin it into the graveyard. So what are we going to try to do? Well, we're going to go out with Merfolk, Try to get a ton of counters on our creatures with the exploring and other means and just have some fun generating value in these two colors when it comes to counters, creatures, and getting in for damage. Um, I think Hackball is one of the more fun Merfolk commanders we've seen in a long time. I think Kumain is probably the, the choice that everybody thinks about, but I think what's fun about Hackball can get very out of hand very quickly. And then we have so much great uh, protection in these two colors to protect our creatures, and it just creates a, a nice... Um, ecosystem of, of a, a counter field mayhem for Hackball to exist in. But the first thing we're going to talk about is Merfolk. I mean, there's so many great Merfolk, especially from these sets. And since Defather Echo came out in LCI, the beginning of combat, our turn, it explores. Then you could have it become a copy of another creature you control to end a turn. Obviously, we don't want to copy a legendary creature, otherwise we're going to run into that. But I think it can copy some of our Merfolk that buff other Merfolks or, or have other abilities and allow us to just double up on some really good abilities. Emperor Mihal the second says we can look at the top card of our library at any time. We can cast Merfolk from the top. And whenever we cast a Merfolk spell, we can pay one. And if we do, we make a 1-1 one, one Merfolk creature token. So basically we can not only extend our hand at the top of our library, but we can make little Merfolk as we cast Merfolk and go wider and wider. Harbinger of the Sea is probably the newest Merfolk on this list from Modern Horizons 3, turning all non-basic lands into islands. This is really important for two reasons. One... It has this Blood Moon style effect for islands, but number two, there are multiple merfolk that we'll talk about here in the next couple slides that give our merfolk island walk, meaning that that could pair really well and make all of our merfolk unblockable, basically, to get into our opponents. Another one of the unblockable uh, things we have is Herald of the Secret Streams that says creatures we control with a pulse and pulse encounter on them can't be blocked. It's going to allow us to get in for big damage and try to end these games out. Lord of Atlantis over there on the right is one of these merfolk that give other merfolk pulse one, pulse one, and island walk. And then Kumena there in the middle is the option I mentioned previously. We can tap an untap merfolk we control to give it unblockable, tap three untap merfolk to draw a card, and tap five untap merfolk to put a counter on each merfolk we control. This is kind of the uh, most popular merfolk, com merfolk commander before Hackball was released, and I think still a very viable way to do it playing a lot more of the tap untap shenanigans if you want to do that. But Kamina here is just going to allow us to um, tap the, the tokens we make to draw cards or you know leave our creatures untapped and tap them to do things during our opponent's turns. I think Kamina holds up a lot of value for us in that way. Master of the Pearl Trident is one of the other plus one, plus one, and Island Walk givers. So that way we can potentially get in for some good damage. Mist Dancer is actually going to give all other Merfolk we control flying, which is another way to potentially get them a little bit evasive and make them harder to deal with, especially as they're growing with all those counters, right? Nick and Zill from the Ixlon set says, whenever a creature we explores uh, a land card, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. And then whenever a creature you control explores a non-land card, you put a counter on Nick and Zill. I like this ability a lot because if you think about it, You'll also keep your hand size hopefully fairly low because if they explore a land, right, the land's already gone to your hand after the explore resolves, you can just put that one you just explored onto your hand or pick one of your choice. And then if not, Nick and Zill's just going to get huge and it's going to become another thing that our opponents have to deal with. So I, I think this is a lot of value for just two mana in a deck that's going to be exploring so much. We're playing everybody's favorite merfolk, Roaming Throne. Roaming Throne does a lot in this deck. Um, 
specifically making sure that Hackball is going to have every one of our merfolk uh, explore twice. We'll also trigger a bunch of other things. One of the fun interactions it has in this deck is with Topography Tracker over there on the right. It says if a creature you control would explore, if it explores, then it explores again. This is going to double up with Roaming Throne, meaning we should get um, four explorers uh, in total instead of two, putting a lot of counters across our board. And then Sylveon of Sea and Sky, uh, when it, it has Indestructible, as long as we control two other Merfolk, when it attacks, we draw a card, and other Merfolk have Ward 1, which can actually be doubled by Roaming Throne to be Ward 2, <laughs> effectively. Um, Sylveon's great just for the Ward 1, and then it's a not bad body for three mana that you can use... Um, against your opponents. Vidalian Hexcatcher is one of my favorites uh, pieces of tech. It gives other Merfolk plus one plus one, but we can sacrifice a Merfolk to counter target non-creature spell unless his controller pays one. So if your opponents tap out for a really big spell, you can sacrifice a Merfolk to counter that spell unless they pay one, and that can be really tricky sometimes, depending on where and when you can exactly um, set it up. I think this is a really important ability because it can force your opponents to maybe only be able to cast one spell on a turn instead of two, depending on right where their mana is and how big of a spell they're casting. And I think that's important to think about in the back of your head. It's not just countering a spell when your opponent taps out, but it could be forcing them into a bad turn because you have to take mana away from that spell. Note that you can do that multiple times uh, if you wanted to as well to force your opponent to have to do it. Wanderwine Prophets is a great... Um, way to potentially go go pretty far off when it comes in you champion a merfolk so you have to sacrifice it unless you remove another merfolk we control from the game and when this leaves play you get to bring it back and it says whenever it deals combat damage to a player you may sack a merfolk if you do you take an extra turn so with enough ways to make those merfolk tokens or enough bodies laying around wanderwine could lead to a bunch of extra turns and a bunch of extra combats if you have the right pieces on board and then zakana fits so well into hackball when it comes in, if we control a counter creature with a counter on it, we draw a card. But each creature we control the counter on it has trample. And this is just as good as unblockable, in my opinion, because it's going to still lead to some really bad blocks for your opponents, especially with how big some of these merfolk are going to get. Even after LCI, when I made this deck and I tried it a little bit of my own, you still had games where your merfolk are getting up to six or eight counters really quickly. And with trample, that's, that's very difficult to deal with unless your opponent has a big board that they're willing to block out and stop from happening. But... Hey, Hackball doesn't have to be the only reason we get counters on our permanents. There's a lot of new ways, especially from this set, right? Communal Brewing came out in the Commander decks uh, when it comes in. Any number of target opponents each draw a card, and then you get one plus the number of creatures uh, players that drew a card of uh, ingredient counters on this, and then every creature we cast comes in with that many plus one plus one counters on it, making them already big enough when they come in. Adonis Climb from Rivals of Ixalan feels great here. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you put a counter on a creature, and then if that creature has three or more counters on it, we flip it over. Um, Hadana flips into a land on the backside that for three mana can give a creature plus X plus X and flying where X is its power. So you just double the power of a creature and put it in the air can lead to some big attacks, right? I think the deck, the reason that anyone's talking about counters in Keeper's Talent, of course, being one of those new key pieces that Bloomborough brought us. Being of every turn, putting a counter on a creature. Level 2 gives all of our permanents with counters, and then Ward 1, a way to protect our board. And level 3 turns into that Brangy Evolution doubling season style effect, where we can double the amount of counters put on. It gets even better when it comes to exploring. Simic Ascendancy, of course, the perfect win con for any plus one plus one counter deck. Every time you put one or more counters on something, you put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. At the start of our upkeep, if we have 20 or more, we win the game. Uh, Simic Ascendancy can also put counters on a, a creature control with its own ability, but this is going to get out of hand really quickly with Hackball and basically just allow us to just start dumping creatures up, uh, counters on our creatures. Song of Frailies is kind of a fun one in that it allows you to use your creatures to tap for mana for two turns, and then on the third turn you put a counter on every creature you control, and they get Vigilance, Trample, and Indestructibles on a turn. A good way to just work your way towards a nice crescendo and just take a big attack at your opponents. And they have a Vigilance, so, you know, you're not worried about getting hit on this crackback, but hopefully at this point we can have enough counters on all of our creatures that it becomes a problem. I wanted to, st I wanted to try Stocking the Pantry. This card seems interesting. Whenever you put a counter or more counters on a creature you control, you put a supply counter on Stocking the Pantry. You can pay two to remove a counter from it to draw a card. I'm sure there are cheaper ways to draw cards, but I just I feel like this feels like something we're going to be able to really take advantage of. Think about it. If we explore with five creatures and at least you know, and at least a couple of them get counters on them, we're just stocking up counters on stocking the pantry, and then we can just 
pitch the you know pitch two mana right to draw through those cards you know and, and try to get more I, I, I feel like the values there there may be better ways to do it but i think it's fun to at least give a shot especially since we're talking about new cards well let's talk about ways just to just to have some fun we're in simic colors there's a ton of fun things to do including the first two cards which are always cards that i've wanted to resolve the first is aggressive biomancy this is for the modern horizons three uh, commander sets it says create x tokens that are a copy of tar creature you control except they have when this creature etbs it fights up to one tar creature you don't control there's a lot of applications for biomancy I mean, you could do something like uh, Roaming Throne and just get completely out of hand, or you could pick a Merfolk that gives everything a buff, or there's pl plenty of ways you could take aggressive biomancy to like really find good value. And I think the other part, nice part, is because it comes in and fights something if you want it to, this could be a way to just clear out a couple of creatures before you get into combat. Doppelgang, though, is a little bit interesting. For each of X target permanents, make X copies that are tokens that are copies of that permanent. This is a really interesting one for a lot of ways. You could pick lands, you pick creatures, you could pick enchantments. I think there's so many ways you can take Doppelgang. And when we're in a deck that's gonna be churning through our deck and getting lands down quickly, I think there's a real world where we're gonna be able to use either of these two to good success on a big term. We're not really playing a pod style deck, but I think Neoform makes sense here. It's this additional cast cost this spell. We have to sack a creature. And we go find a creature out of our deck with uh, mana value one plus the sacrifice creature's uh, mana value and put that card on the battlefield with an additional counter on it. Where I see this working is for things like maybe we have a three mana merfolk that we don't really want or isn't really that beneficial to us at the moment. Well, we can neoform for like a Herald of Secret Streams or something like that. Like we can go up into one mana value higher and get a really key piece. I feel like neoform could be really good for that. Again, we're not playing into the pod completely, but I feel like it's still worth as a one of to have for those right scenarios. Wave Goodbye in the middle just makes complete sense. Return each creature without a plus one plus one counter to its owner's hand. All of our merfolk should have them. Our opponents probably won't. That should allow us to pick up their entire boards and just get in for a big attack. Season of Gathering is a new green card that I feel like fits really well into a lot of these decks that care about counters. At minimum, for five paws, you can put a counter on five different creatures and give them Vigilance and Trample. Uh, for two man for two paws, if we need if we if we need to, we can pick artifact or enchantment to destroy all permanents of the chosen type. This works great because we're not playing a ton of artifacts in our deck, so that might be a good way to really um, get in and hose those artifact decks, or just three paws, draw cards cards for the greatest power among creatures we control. I think a good combination of the first and second one could be really good. Destroy all artifacts and get a couple counters and a couple creatures just could be really beneficial, or draw and get a couple counters. I think there's definitely some ways we can look at Season of Gathering, but I feel like it fits really well in our deck. And then Garrick's Uprising just makes a ton of sense. Giving all of our creatures trample, turning these big creatures with lots of counters on them into a way to get in for good damage. But I've said before on the show, it'll say again, no decks ever complete. Even though we're updating Hackball, we look at it back when um, when LCI came out. I think there's still some things we can learn in testing. The first is, how do we want the deck to run? You know, we see Intruder Alarm over there on the right, which works very well with um, Kumena and some of our other abilities that can make tokens when we cast things or things come in. Um, I don't think we're really an intruder alarm deck, but I feel like it is a piece you could put in there to help a ton. Raise the Palisade is probably the card of these three that makes the most sense, uh, returning all non merfolk creatures back to their hand. Uh, the only reason I didn't bring Palisade into this list specifically was just the cost. I, I thought for $15 I'm better off getting something like Innkeeper's Talent rather than this, but I think if you were to if you were to bring your budget up just a little bit, remember the show tries its best to have some sort of budget. I think Palisade makes sense, and then Season of Weaving. I feel like it has the benefits of to being a half decent card. I just like Gathering a little bit better, and that's why I picked it over the Weaving to try out. Um, but I think it could still be something there. But let's get into our play test. Let's have some fun. Keeping a three lander with Stony Book Banneret. Um, making all merfolk cost one less to cast, a Farseek, Nikanzil, and then Quest for Renewal, a fun way to get our creatures to untap. It's just when a creature you control becomes tapped, you put a counter on it, and there's four more counters on it, untap all creatures you control during each other player's untap step. So every turn our creature's gonna untap. This is a card that works really well with Kumena, right, in that tapping for value. But I think it's still worth it to just basically, right, give all of our creatures vigilance. So not a bad start in opening hand. We get a Yavamaya, uh, coast there turn one we'll get our um forest on there turn one 
turn two, we'll play that island. There's a couple ways we can go. We could Farsi guaranteeing hackball next turn. We could Stony Book Baronet, you know, gu guaranteeing hackball next turn. Um, I guess there's a there's some varying views on how to do that. I think the Banneret could make sense for future turns, right? Getting more and more folk down, but I also don't mind just the straight ramp either. Um, just making sure that we get more sources down. For purposes of this, let's banner it. Let's just see, you know, what we can do on future turns, and this will allow us to potentially, like, you know, shuffle our deck a little bit if we see too many lands, right, or too many spells off the top. So we play the banner it has Island Walk, and then other Merfolk and Wizards cost one less to cast. We'll go into turn three, drawing a Rampant Growth, and that means we could play Hackball there right now because of that one cost. Uh, reduction. Now we're going to go to start exploring. Um, I've always gone left to right. It really doesn't matter. You could pick your choice, but we'll start with Stony Book Banneret. We reveal Season of Gathering, and this is where I think the benefit of this deck comes in. If I really like Season of Gathering, I could just put it right back on top and keep it there, and it's just going to keep getting plus one, plus one counters on my creatures. Um, I like the Gathering, and in fact, I kind of like to keep it on top, so we're just going to, you know, both of them are just going to explore that card. We're going to get the counters, and, you know, Banneret can attack if we want to. We're going to turn four, get that um, Rello with Cory Tower in hand, so we're not worried about losing out on any of the cards we draw. I feel like Nick and Zill could make sense. You know, maybe like Nick and Zill and the quest, or Nick and Zill and one of our ramp spells, just to kind of get some things out of our hand, but also get some things down on board. Kapala couldn't be bad either. I think I would play Nick and Zill and then... My gut tells me just churn through my deck a little bit. I'm only going to be tapping, what, two creatures probably this turn when I attack? Let's do the quest. I'm going to take a damage from the coast, but that's okay. We're going to move to combat. Again, left or right on the explore. Remember that if we explore a land card, we can put it from our hand on the battlefield tapped. And if we explore a non-land card, we put a counter on Nick and Zill. So we'll start with the Banneret. This is a non-land card. I like Patrick Banneret. It's a great choice. A little bit of a buff, a little bit of a mana rock. So we'll go plus one counter here. Plus one counter here. Plus one counter here, plus one counter here, plus one counter here. And it actually will get a counter from its own explorer as well. And we're going to leave that Patrick banner on top. So we'll attack this turn, right? This will put two counters on the quest room renewal. Whenever Hackball attacks, we can put a land from our hand on the battlefield. We don't have one, so we're going to go ahead and draw that Patrick banner. So now we have it for next turn, right? And uh, not a bad attack here, a 5-5 five, five and a 3-3. Three, three. We could just find somewhere to put, you know, Stony Book Banner that we're not worried about it, right? Moving we'll to our next turn, we see a Repulsive Mutation, a great protection uh, spell, allowing us to counter a spell um, unless its owner pays mana value, mana equal to the greatest power among creature control, which right now is, is six, right? So that's a great counter spell, uh, potentially. We're going to turn on the quest for renewal this turn, so I'd probably pay the Patchwork Banner and Copala, that's what I'm thinking. Or do we leave the mutation up? I think this is the point where somebody might be able to just try to mess with our board, right? So maybe we leave the two mana up for the repulsive mutation. Uh, remember that, um, well, no, we can't, right? Because we paid three for the banner. Uh, I guess we don't need Kapala down. So we could just pay three for the banner and then leave the banner and, you know, mana up for the repulsive mutation. We'll go to combat, start with the banner, start exploring. So that goes into our hand. And we're going to put it down, right, with Nick and Zill's ability. We're going to surveil one off of the hedge maze. I honestly don't mind taking another land. I know that it doesn't put more counters on our creatures, but I don't mind it because we'll go to Hackball. Hackball's going to explore, and it gets to get put down, right? So we're just getting more lands onto the battlefield. It, it stinks to not get the counters, but at the same time, we're ramping. And then Nick and Zill's going to explore for Sylvian. We'll keep it on top. And she'll get uh, two counters, actually. Um, we'll move to combat, right, and attack with all three. I mean, Quest for Renewal is now going to turn on, so we're going to untap them. Everybody's untap, you know, steps. Hackball's going to attack. We don't have a, right, we don't have a land from our hand to put down, so we're going to draw that Sylvian. And now, I mean, Nick and Zill's an 8-9. That's going to be tough to deal with. Hackball's a 5-5, five, five, and then, you know, Banner right, still at a 4-4. Uh, four, four, sorry, plus one from the, from the Banner, right? So, great board state. We keep the Repulsive up. In case we need to protect our board. And we'll go one more turn. So in turn six, I mean, look at how many lands that just these explorers plus this Nick and Zell. You know, this 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 engine right here is a really great engine to have. We've got eight mana. 
at our disposal. We can get more creatures down, right, for more chances to explore if we want to. Um, or we could go all, all in on something like Season of Gathering. But I kind of like the idea of just getting both of these merfolk down for four mana. we still got four mana up. Kapala helps protect the board. Sylvian gives everything else ward one. And I think we can keep the mutation up. Might as well use something like Farseek to go through our deck and just um, get another piece out. In my, At least my thought is go get a, another land and just kind of get it out of our... I think I'm out of all my dual lands, so we'll just get an island. Um, my thought here is just um, shuffle up the deck. Maybe we can get some other good stuff on top, but we'll move to combat. I mean, we're going to attack with the three that can attack, but we're going to start exploring left to right. We see Tadioba on top, a great card, um, but I think it makes the most sense just to leave it on top. So one, right, two, two, three. Four, five, right? Explores. And then this gets five more counter because everybody, right? Everybody explored into that. Nickenzel's now massive. We still got a couple mana up for the repulsive mutation. We just, you know, take an attack. They're going to untap because of the quest renewal. A uh, hackball will draw us that Taddy Ova. Um, we do have enough to play Taddy Ova, but I kind of rather play the, leave the mutation up just in case. And again, take an attack here, they untap with the quest, and I think we'll go we'll go one more turn just to show it. We see this clue courtyard. I'll play Teddy over. Play the courtyard, right? Gain a life, draw a card. Um, I don't have any other lands to play, but that's okay because I, I know I can get them down potentially with Nick and Zill or with Hackball's ability. Um, but we'll just go to combat, right? Do our do our explorers again. We'll start with Banneret. We see Growth Spiral. Girl Spiral is pretty great, um, but I think we're pretty far done on land. So I think we'll just go counter onto the Banneret. Next up, we see Merfolk Sovereign. That's great because it gives us a buff and can make something unblockable. So I think I'm going to leave that on top. Hackball, Godzill. And then, you know, now Nick and Zill is getting up into the range where we could be able to just knock somebody out. <laughs> we'll keep pushing it around into other people. Um, you know, Hackball is going to attack. We'll put that Rogue Passage down to draw a card right off of, off of Teddy Ova. And I think you can kind of see where our natural end step here is there. We didn't see any of the fun, you know, protection pieces other than, or trample pieces other than Repulsive and that Gathering. But in that turn, we could just have easily played Teddy Ova and the Gathering, given these five, you know, plus and plus one and trample, and that game could be potentially over, right, depending on what our opponents have. So it just goes to show you that, like, you, get, you know, that's why I think Gathering can be good. Is it is an overwhelming stampede better in some issues, in some chances? Probably. And we have, we, I think we have one in the deck, if I recall correctly. But that just goes to show you that you have options sometimes that you have. Three lander here with Kumena, Grow Spiral, Deeper Pilgrimage. So whenever one or more non-token merfolk come tap, we get a 1-1. One, one, and then Mist Dancer. So here, this works really well with Kumena, right? Um, and again, that intruder alarm type thing. I think... Probably the more we think about it, the more it makes sense to bring it in. But turn one, I mean, I don't really have anything I can do, so we'll just play land. I thought about playing that Mosswork Bridge, but we'll we'll give it a, a chance here to, to ride a little bit. Turn two, we'll play that Flooded Grove. Quicksilver Fountain, at the start of everybody's upkeep, we put a Flood Counter on a land, and that land is an island for as long as there's a Flood Counter on it. And then if all lands play our islands, we remove all Flood Counters from all of them. So this is a way to enable right that Island Walk. Um, I think I'll just get Deep Root Pilgrimage down just as a way to start setting up for future turns. Turn three. See, I've got Kumena this turn, which isn't a bad setup into Hackball next turn. Or I could do something like Girl Spiral. I think I'll just do this and get Kumena down and uh, go into here. Turn four. Fortunately, we did not hit a land. I just realized four uh, Hackball, but that's okay. We'll Mosswork Bridge. We get to look at the top five. And when our creatures have total power 10 or greater, we can cast that for free. Probably the tracker will allow us to start uh, exploring twice. Makes sense. We'll, we'll have that off over here. Three mana up. I'll just growth spiral, draw a card, put a land down here. That's ability. That is two mana up. So nothing too sexy to do with it. We'll just try to attack with Murph. I mean, we should have a, have a good attack here with Kumena. 
on this turn, which will make us that 1-1 one, one, uh, token when it becomes tapped. Coming into turn 5 here, now we have the mana for Hackball. So I think we'll just play Hackball here and keep up, like, Pongify. We draw a Luge from uh, Bloomboro. A great card, not a Merfolk, but um, it can start putting Flood Counters on lands to make them islands. And we'll allow to enable that, right, that, um, that unblockability with Island Walk. We'll move to combat and just start exploring. We'll start with Kumena. Nick and Zill is great. I want to keep that on top. So we'll just go one, two, and three. If I have an attack for the um, four, seven, nines, we're one off Mossword Bridge. If I had an attack here with the Merfolk um, token, I'd take it. Otherwise... The question becomes, do I attack with Kumana now, or do I tap all three of them during my one of my opponent's turns to draw? I think I'll just attack, get another 1-1, one, one, you know, and call that a day there. We'll come to our turn, and now we do have 10 total power, so we can crack off that um, Mosswort Bridge if we want to. Or we did leave a blue up for Pongify there, if somebody had a creature we really need to get rid of. Here I could see two lines. We either miss Dancer to bring everything into the air and do it that way. Or we nick and zill and, and get the topography tracker down uh, that way. I kind of think it's nick and zill plus the tracker uh, off the Mossworth Bridge. That still gives us one mana left. Uh, see if I nick and zill here, here, we'd have a blue left for the Pongify. Remember, nick and zill can uh, put lands down or grow depending on that. Uh, we'll go to combat and just explore across like we did before, revealing Harbinger of the Seas, which we don't have any of the Island Walk stuff yet, but I think Harbinger could still be worth it. So everybody's going to get their explore, but actually remember they explore twice, right? Because of Topography Tracker. And I forgot that we make a map token when it comes in. So we'll get the map token. But then that means 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 more counters on um, Nick and Zill. So it's going to get big. And then I think, you know, we attack with Hackball, uh, attack with Kamena, attack with the token. And we, we can't attack with Nick and Zill because it just came in this turn. So that's three. It's only one trigger because it's one attack, I believe, for the Merfolk token. But that's okay. That does give us a couple more Merfolk to tap to draw with Kamena. But again, take the attack, and then on our opponent's turn, you know, we'll we'll tap these to draw a card with, uh, you know, with the three that we have untapped. We are what one, two, three, four. We're one uh, one merfolk off. Sorry, what would it, I apologize. We would have drawn on hackball as well when it attacked. Um, we're one merfolk off being able to just put a counter and everything with uh, Kamena. But I think we're fine again because of this explore engine we have going on. So we'll get into our next turn here, turn seven. Get a forest down. We no longer have that moss word, but that's okay. I think Mist Dancer makes sense here. And now Nick and Zell's a real threat. And everything being in the air makes all of these merfolk a little bit harder to deal with, right? Uh, I could also play the Song of Frailies first, allowing me to tap these for mana, right? That could be interesting. And then cast the Mist Dancer. I could do that, right? But that would kind of remove the agency of these attacking. I guess the question would be, do I want them to attack or do I not want them to attack? I feel like if I'm going to play Mist Dancer, I want everything to attack. So I think it makes more sense just to do that. We can still keep up the Palmify. Move to Explorer. We just do the Explore Train again, and we probably put enough, you know, enough counters on here to make it relevant. But that just goes to show you, like, as long as we can protect our board, this deck can just turn its engines and crank, um, putting counters on things caring about it and having some fun. But let me know, what do you think of Hackball down in the comment section below? I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I'll catch you guys next time.